Hey, Andrew Picklers. Welcome to our podcast. This is episode 10 of our podcast, Pickleball Therapy. It's a podcast of all things pickleball with a focus on your improvement, trying to help you become the best pickleball player that you can be. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. Uh, You're joining us right at a great time. We're in the middle of a series about mental and emotional training. We've had the great pleasure of interviewing Dr. Peter Scales, a doctor in psychology and also a athletic coach about his thoughts about mental and emotional training and how we can apply those to the game. Let's get into it. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you how you can get a copy of Coach Pete's book. It's a book that I've read. It's a fantastic book. It's in nice bite-sized chunks, if you will. So basically, you know, four or five page chapters that you can read over and over again, as opposed to, you know, trying to get through a 30 page chapter on a subject. You can just read one of these chapters and if you you know if you want to hit it again you hit it again and just keep on learning it's a really good book it's called mental and emotional training for tennis compete learn honor don't be tricked by the four tennis part the concepts in here apply equally to pickleball you can find it on amazon.com at the end of the podcast i'm going to share with you some thoughts about your improvement uh, by sharing some some things that are going on with my personal journey as a pickleball player that'll be in the riff What I want to do now is jump into the interview with Coach Pete. If you haven't heard the first part of the interview, check out episode nine of the podcast. Listen to that. Some really good content in there. Let's hear from Coach Pete. You know, one of the things that 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 in in hearing you speak right now that uh, reminds me of when when, you know, when we we formed into Pickle a couple of years ago and, you know, we 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 have an idea of what we're trying to accomplish. Right. Which is to help players, you know, get as good as they can get, you know, basically like give them the the tools and the skills to, to become the best pickleball player they can. And, you know, we were kind of think of like a, a way of, of communicating that, like a, like a byline or a slogan kind of a thing. And, you know, obviously you can't say, even though we have project 4.0 as an objective, we can't tell everybody, Hey, you're going to be an awesome 4.0 player or 4.5 or 5.0, even though we hope everybody can aspire to it. And if they can make it to that level, that's fantastic. So we came up with, um, it's a uh, be the best player you can be, you know, and basically that's how we we approach our teaching is to say, you know, we want we want to take, you know, if you're if you're brand new to pickleball or brand new to any sport and you're 65 years old and it's your first time playing a sport. Listen, work hard and and and, and become the best player you can be. Maybe you become a 5 I don't know. Right. But I don't want to create some sort of a artificial metric that you have to reach uh, when. And it's the same thing to me when you're playing right when you're playing. I want you to hit the best shot that you can hit. And for, for some players, that's going to be shot X for other players can be shot Y. And I think, you know, a mistake that I see players make is they try and all hit shot Y, you know, they're like, well, I'm going to hit shot Y. And you're like, well, that's fine. If you can learn shot Y great. But if shot X is the best shot you can hit, then hit shot X and be, you know, be good with hitting shot X, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. And, and, and I'll add something else to that, Tony. And that is, when we talk about be the best that you can be, or in my case, compete, you know, give 100% effort at uh, all times, we're not saying, I'm not saying certainly, and I don't think you are either, that you're, you're going to be the best that you can be all the time, because that's not possible. Uh, you can't have peak performance without also having valleys, right? If you, if you have peaks, you have to have valleys. Otherwise, everything's a flat line. Okay. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So, so, and, and that's not just in a pickleball or tennis career that's in a practice session and a match, you're going to have ups and downs. And so when, when, when I refer to best, I'm saying give the best that you have at that moment, you know, because it's going to vary. And, and what, what practice and rehearsal does, uh, whether it's on technique or tactics and strategy, or it's on the mental and emotional that we're, you know, focusing on today. Um, what practice does is it hopefully can help you raise your average level of performance more consistently. And it does that by reducing the distance between your best day and your worst day so that the peaks and the valleys aren't quite as far apart. That's what consistency is. I mean, the pros are inconsistent too. Um, we just don't see it as easily because the, the gap between what they do super, super well and what they do a little less super well <laughs> right. it is really small compared to the gap that we amateurs have between when we're in the zone and when we're just, you know, hackers out there. 
So, so that's the accept the ups and downs. That's the other part of, of loving the game and understanding what you can control and what you can't. And that the heart of the game, whether it's pickleball or tennis, is learning to love the battle and solve the puzzle, love the game, lose yourself and your ego and focus on the game and the challenge and the fun of trying to figure out how to work with all the issues that are presented to you today in this practice or this match. You know, how you feel, you're not feeling your best, your opponent's kind of playing lights out right now, you don't like the wind. Okay, you know, how are you going to use all of that as best you can to help you and to enjoy your time out there as a problem solver? But that's the mindset you've got to have, and that will help reduce the gaps between your peak performance and your valley performance so that you're out there being the best that you can be at any given moment. Yeah, it's almost like you're layering, not almost, you're layering the concept of, you know, being in the moment one swing at a time, one shot at a time sort of concept with the best player you can be and 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 overlaying those so that, you know, you you do you you're the best you can be within what you can control, which is the next shot or the next, you know, at the moment that you're doing it, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, if your opponent is playing lights out, painting the lines and just not missing anything, you know, um, odds are against you probably for that day, unless you're raising your game and doing the same thing. Right. Um, so, you know, it's just how it is. The, the best, I don't know if pickleball has similar statistics, but um, in tennis, we know that, 70, 80% of singles points are going to end on somebody's error. Okay. Not a winner, uh, errors and it doubles. It's a little higher percentage of, of winners, but still 60% of doubles points in tennis end on somebody's error forced or unforced. They don't end on people hitting a winning shot that isn't returned, you know, and, and when you, you look at that number one, it means, Stop trying to go for winners, and especially so early in a point, and we can talk a little more about shot tolerance. <laughs> right, absolutely. Rolling out too quickly out of a long dink rally or something like that. Um, but the other, the other aspect that, that you learn from a statistic like that is that the very best players in the world are still losing nearly half their points. They're still losing nearly half their points between, you know, 45, 48, percent of their points and it, it's a kind of mind-boggling that way when you look at the the very best players in the world frequently losing points and losing games you know um, so there's a lot of losing going on out there even if it do- doesn't always result in a lost match so you've you've got to adjust yourself to losing points is going to happen losing games is going to happen uh, and if you have a one point at a time mentality and a puzzle solving, I mean, you described in one of your podcasts coming back from what was it, one or ten, <laughs> one yeah. or two down. I mean, because you gave up trying to actually win and you're just trying to get some momentum going for the second game. Yeah, we so, do things. We do things. Yeah, exactly. When I'm playing, I'll do things like, you know, let's just get another serve. You know, let's yeah. just. I'll tell my partner sometimes, uh, you know, if we're down five, nine, let's say, uh, and we win a, we win the next, so we're serving and we win the next points. So and now it's six, nine, I'll say something silly, like, you know what? Six, nine, boring, seven, nine. That's interesting. And so then yeah. now we just have a goal to get to seven, nine. It's not win the game. And, you know, yeah. and I, I, I gently push back kind of with a, not kind of with a smile. I gently push back with a smile whenever somebody says, um, you know, it'll be like, eight, nine, one, we just sided him out and I'll say, okay, let's get this point. And they'll, tell, they'll look at me and go, let's get three points. And I'm like, what, what shot do you want me to hit? I'm like, give me a three point shot. I'll take it. Uh, right. if not, let's just get this one point. Right. Okay. All right. We'll get one point. And right. because I think, you know, we set ourselves up when we say things, even just, you know, three points, four points, I need two points. You can't get them. It just doesn't, it, there's no possibility for that. So why not, you know, and, and going to the, the swing would actually be how about this? My focus is just hit a nice serve, right? Because that's all I can do right now. I can't even win the the point or the rally, right? And get a point. So I'm really, you know, if you want to take it to the micro, I'd say execute a nice serve, right? That's all I can do right now and then see what happens. So anyway. Yeah, yeah that, that that's exactly it. And, you know, when you, um, 
when you do that um, and you're trying to come back uh, in that situation, I mean, it, it's one point at a time, one stroke at a time. And sometimes even if you don't win the point, the fact that you stayed in the point longer than you had been as a singles player or a doubles team, even that can start to rattle your opponent's minds, you know, like they're not winning their points as easily. Right. So sometimes, you know, you 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 can't go f- a lot of the times you can't go from a really negative position, whether it's in score or in your mind of how you're you know, berating yourself. You can't go immediately from negative to totally positive to like total acceptance of yourself as a worthwhile human being from the moment when you said, oh, I'm a horrible person for missing that. Um, so you've got to go to neutral. And, you know, sometimes just maintaining a longer rally gets you from not playing well, making poor shot selection or execution decisions too early in a point. And that alone gets you back to neutral because you're lasting longer. Maybe you didn't win the point, um, but you lasted longer. So that's an improvement. We'll take that. Uh, in the same way, mentally, uh, we, we talk with our players, um, and just as important for pickleball as tennis, that you've got to have and you've got to rehearse a between point routine mentally to, to have a positive response to the point when won or lost. Uh, you've got to relax and you've got to refocus on the next point. What are you going to do? What's your what's your strategy? What's your tactic? Um, and that's all got to be done in you know a handful of seconds, a few handfuls of seconds. So it's got to be quick. And sometimes you cannot move quickly in that first positive response from a totally negative mental attitude and physical drooping of the shoulders, whatever, you know, showing, you know, disappointment to a completely positive. So you go to neutral. And so we have players say, okay, okay. And that's the one word cue at the end of a point that says, I accept what happened. You don't have to like what happened, but okay, it's over. Now I'm going to breathe. I'm going to relax and I'm going to focus on what did I learn from that? Okay, I'm going to have to aim a little higher over the net so I don't hit it into the net. A little more topspin maybe, keep it in the court if it went long. Um, and, and what am I going to do tactically and strategically or my partner and I going to do on this next point? So, okay, it just goes from negative to neutral. Then you can go from neutral to positive. That's some really good advice, coach. Yeah, it, 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 it resonates. And I think it, um, I've, I've done that with, Um, college players as well as high school and you know it's like I say about the pros and the same thing applies to college to high school and to then adult rec players um, who are halfway decent but are not as good as a serious high school player or definitely not as a a serious college player or pro Um, they all make the same mistakes we do technically mentally they make the same mistakes they just make them faster and they recover from them more quickly. So what, what we as amateurs at whatever level need to do is to figure out how to identify and recover from our mistakes more quickly. And that we can do. We can learn that. So this, this um, going from negative to neutral to neutral to positive um, is, is one of the ways that we can sort of control that process a little bit better and and move ourselves on to recovery and get back to positive enjoyment more quickly. I hope that you're able to take Coach Pete's tips and insights about mental and emotional training, the concepts that he talks about and incorporate them into your game. It'll really help you be more relaxed on the court, more confident on the court, and just enjoy the game better. We're going to continue the interview with Coach Pete in subsequent episodes. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast so you're notified of those episodes as they're put out. In today's riff, I'm gonna share with you some concepts that have really been highlighted in my own personal journey as a pickleball player, as I continue to train and improve and try and, and you know fix holes in my game and things like that. I think these concepts will really help you too as you work on your game. Stay tuned. Every week players ask Lori or me about the Into Pickle Academy. They wanna know more about our online courses and what they're about. 
If you're interested in knowing more about the Intopickle Academy, you can visit intopickle.com and you'll be able to link to a video that explains the Intopickle Academy. Or better yet, join us for one of our free 30-minute workshops. During the workshop, you'll learn a thing or two and learn about the Academy. See you in class. One of the beautiful things about pickleball is that it provides a journey, a different journey for every person. It's very personalized. And so, you know, each one of us comes to the game a little bit differently, uh, perhaps with a tennis background like I have or uh, with another, a background in another sport, whether it's soccer or baseball or something else. And so what's, what's fascinating about pickleball is that, you know, we each have a certain skill set that we bring to the game and you can really adjust the game or you can really come up with a game plan that makes sense, most sense for your game. So that's part of the journey that I've been on in, as my as I try and develop as a player. I'm uh, 51, I think, this year I turn. And so, you know, even at 51, I'm still trying to work on my game. I'm trying to, uh, you know, find different angles, different things that'll that'll make me a better player. And so, you know, I've been working on a, on a shot, on, on a backhand shot uh, that, uh, you know, modifying it for my game. I am a one-handed backhand player in tennis and also a one-handed backhand player in pickleball. What I've been working on is adding a second hand to my backhand, not a full-handed two-handed backhand like you would see the pros sometimes use, that two-handed drive backhand like that, but more of a second hand to, to give some uh, uh, framing to the shot, basically to keep my, my backswing more limited, keeping the paddle a lot in front of my body so the paddle doesn't come behind me, and also to provide a little stability sometimes. You know, If I get a really hard shot, I have that second hand on there to provide stability. That's a process for me because that's not something that I'm used to. It's something that, uh, you know, I haven't done before playing pickleball. In tennis, when I brought my backhand back, I would use two hands because my, my right hand, I'm left-handed, my right hand would hold the neck of the, of the racket as it went back. But in pickleball, I never really use the other hand or my offhand as part of the stroke. So that's something I'm adding to my game. The reason I say that to you is because it's something that I think you can do too in, as part of your game. Not just bring the other hand into play, but any area of your game that might need improvement or where you know you have a weakness that you're trying to shore up. What you try and do is try and find some technique or try and think of a, a, a way that you can help reduce the weakness or, or strengthen that, that part of your game. Uh, in my case, it's using the offhand or trying to bring the offhand into play. What's really important is when you find something like that that you want to work on and you want to focus on, really spend time on it. Like for instance, today I, I went down and I worked for about an hour and change, hour and a little bit over an hour on very on, on basically the same thing over and over and over again. I didn't do that for 15 minutes and then go serve for 15 minutes and then hit you know volleys for 15 minutes. I, I had a very specific uh, thing I wanted to work on, a very specific skill I wanted to work on, and I spent the time working on it, trying different fields, uh, you know, maybe a little bit higher, a little bit lower on the stroke, a little more swing, a little less swing, and just see how it feels till you get used to, well, to one, till you figure out what works, and then secondly, till you really ingrain it into your muscle memory. So work on the game in the way that makes sense for you. Find the things that you need to bring into your game to make yourself a better player, as opposed to looking at other players and just saying, you know, I want that shot because that looks like a cool shot that they're hitting. Maybe that's the right shot for you. Maybe it's not. The better question is, what do I need to make myself the best player that I can be? Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast and thanks for listening. If you like the content, please share it with other pickleball players. We enjoy making this content, but at the end of the day, we're trying to get it out there to as many pickleball players as possible. If you enjoyed the content, it's a good chance they will too. Stay safe and see you next week.